Hello everyone and welcome back to McKegg's Movie Mayhem in association with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. I am your host Eli McKegg and today I'm going to be doing the movie review for Night Swim. Marco. You need to say something back. Ronan, Marco. Why aren't you saying anything? Night Swim is the newest horror film from Blumhouse and Atomic Monster. In fact, this is the first film under their United branch. And I have to say, as being the first film under their United branch, it is not starting out that great. Night Swim is sort of a disappointing start to a two major horror film production companies merging together. And this is sort of their first movie out and it's not his it's not a great movie i can tell you that but i will say the thing that will make people afraid of night swim are people that have phasmophobia because there are a lot of moments in this film where people are just swimming down and down and down and down in this pool to the point where there's just so much open water and there's a lot of darkness in this water to where you're like oh I can't see what's around me. This is terrifying. And to the people that have thaslophobia, this, this is a movie where you might want to skip. But in terms of being a horror film, this movie wasn't really scary to me. And the basic premise is a family moves into this new house that has an outdoor pool and the pool is haunted. And the one of the family members starts sort of getting possessed by the pool and chaos ensues. So very much this movie didn't really have a lot to deliver in terms of horror. There are a lot of moments where I felt like the movie was trying to be scary, but it didn't really make me feel scared because the entire time I was watching the film, all I was thinking was, man, some of these characters are making really dumb decisions. And I know that's normal for a horror film to have that feeling of, oh, these characters are making dumb decisions. But it's something to where if you're in this area and you've been around this pool area for a lot of time throughout the entire movie, and you know there's something wrong with the pool, like you just know something's wrong with the pool, and suddenly you just start hearing something that makes you go, oh, I'm going to go by the pool. It's like, no, you know there's something wrong with this pool. You have known for a while that there is something wrong with this pool. Why are you trying to make the pool work? Why are you going near the pool? It's just some of those dumb decisions that make me question everything and make me question why certain characters are working the way they do, especially when those characters early on make it seem like that they understand and they're a little bit smarter when it, in terms of what happens with some of the stuff that happens in the movie. It's just, it's one of those things that annoy me in some horror films when some of the main characters acknowledge that they're a little bit smarter, but then they do dumb things in these movies. It's, it's just annoying to me. It's a little nitpick that I have for horror films. Also just, again, there are a few jump scares in it, but they didn't really scare me because I think it was just one of those things where I just expected it. And also like in the back of my head, for some of the creature designs and some of the character designs for some of the horror characters, I had little jokes in my head. Like there is one like horror thing that was in there and all in my mind I was thinking, oh, that's Danny DeVito. And it wasn't played by Danny DeVito. It's just the creature looked as though it was, a, it looked like Danny DeVito. And I mean that in jest, everyone likes to make jokes about Danny DeVito and the way he looks because it's, funny. He is a funny man and he acknowledges that funniness. But like it was just something about these creatures that didn't really scare me. And then I was interested in the idea of this haunted pool that there was something in the pool that was scaring that could be scary and could cause thassalophobia people to be terrified. But then they sort of explained why the pool was the way it is. And then that sort of took away the luster of it. Like, you know, when I was watching the movie, I was thinking, oh, well, I, I can't wait for them to explain why the pool is the way it is. And I was hoping it would have been something smaller, like, oh, someone died in the pool and now the pool is haunted, like something like that. But 
there was some there was this grander reason why this pool was haunted and I, all I was thinking was man I would have liked it if it was a bit simpler because the grander explanation of why this pool is haunted is not interesting to me it is just there and I just wasn't intrigued by it at all and I know I'm giving all these negatives throughout but I want to at least acknowledge two positives in this movie and that was the cat and that was two of the cast members Carrie Condon who played the mom in the movie and White Russell who played the dad in the movie and it's Carrie Condon and White Russell are two actors that are amazing they are two people that I am so happy that they are getting to be able to show themselves as lead especially Carrie Condon who is sort of the main character of this film like the mom is very much the lead protagonist of this story and she does an amazing job being this motherly figure while also being like hey there's something wrong here with this pool we need to acknowledge there's something wrong and she goes out and gets answers and she's sort of the one where we discover like why the pool the way is the way it is and it was something that i found very good because she was able to put forth she was able to be an active character in the i'm going to find these answers i'm going to make sure we can stop this i'm going to make sure i can save the people i need to save and white russell very much is someone he's the dad who is sort of starting to get possessed by the pool and whenever white russell was able to turn that switch and go oh i'm now going to be playing crazy right now it was so good. White Russell is slowly turning into one of those actors for me where it doesn't matter what he's in, he's going to probably be the one I like the most when I watch their movie, when I watch his movie. And he was great in it. And I'm I'm so glad they were able to let him have that little fun in playing a sort of villainous version of his character, even though the non-villainous version of the character is also a really good character. I have to, I really did enjoy their characters and I enjoyed their acting. It was just everyone else's character and just the story in this film really didn't help me acknowledge and like enjoy the film as much as I did. I felt myself in my head not being scared. I felt that I was making more jokes in my head as I was watching the movie, like sort of not making me afraid of the film and then just sort of the dumb decisions that they had the characters make now I mean like this shot right here is like the best shot of the film like the upward shot of someone swimming across the pool like that's in my opinion one of the best shots of the film it's just unfortunate that it's only there one time so yeah I think I think if you want to watch this film you go watch it for yourself I don't recommend going out and watching this movie like you can save money you don't have to go watch this movie in my opinion so overall, I give this film a 2 out of 5 stars, a 4 out of 10. Next week, I'm going to be hopping back into the realm of movie musicals as I watch the 20-year remake. And by 20 years, I mean it's been 20 years since the last one came out. So the remake, mu musical remake of Mean Girls. So until then, I've been Eli McKegg with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. And I hope you all remember to watch movies.